Hi everyone, it's Sean here from TurboSource. We got the opportunity to work with CFS Radiator's Race Ready Mazda MX-5 Miata ND Radiator. This unit is a full aluminum piece, which is a nice upgrade over the plastic end tanks on the OEM unit. This unit also is just about double the thickness of the OEM unit, which is going to offer a significant increase in cooling. The unit's fitment overall was very good and it made it very easy to install. I am now going to walk you through the installation of the radiator. The tools that are needed are the following. A flathead screwdriver, an adjustable pliers, a quarter inch ratchet, a 10 millimeter long quarter inch socket, a 12 millimeter long quarter inch socket, a 10 millimeter short quarter inch socket, a 3 8 inch ratchet, a 3 8 inch extension of your choice, a 12 millimeter short 3 8 socket, a 10 millimeter open ended wrench. Note, you do not have to remove the bumper to do this install, but the under tray does need to be removed. Please watch our TurboSource ND Turbo System Install How To Video Part 2 for instructions on how to do this. First you will want to drain your coolant. I highly suggest doing this after the car has cooled down completely with the under tray removed. You will see a white plastic threaded plug located on the passenger side of the radiator. I recommend you locate a container to hold the coolant that will pour out once you start to loosen this plug. Let the coolant drain out completely before moving on to the next step. From the front of the car, the AC condenser is secured to the radiator by one M6 bolt on each side of the condenser. Use your 10 millimeter open-ended wrench or the quarter inch ratchet with the 10 millimeter short quarter inch socket to remove these. Use the flathead screwdriver to release the clip that is holding the lower radiator hose to the fan shroud. Then take the adjustable pliers to release and pull back the clamp that is securing the radiator hose to the radiator. Note, you may want to put the container that is holding your coolant below this to not make a mess. You may need to use a flathead screwdriver to loosen up the radiator hose to get it off the radiator. Take the adjustable pliers and release the clamp on the upper radiator hose. For this hose, I pulled on the hose as the clamp was released to remove it from the radiator. Use the 3 8 inch ratchet and the 3 8 inch extension of your choice and the 12 millimeter short 3 8 inch socket to remove two M8 bolts on each side of the radiator to remove the bracket that is securing the bottom of the radiator to the chassis. On the engine side of the fan shroud, there is a clip on each side of the fan shroud that needs to be released. Once these are released, it allows the radiator to be removed from the vehicle. When dropping the radiator out of the bottom of the car, the hardest part of the removal is getting the top of the radiator outlet around the AC hard lines. It's best to lower the passenger side of the radiator down past the AC lines before you lower the driver's side. The stock radiator has six rubber grommets that need to be removed with a flathead screwdriver and then transferred to the CFS radiator. Note, it is best to install the rubber grommets onto the CFS radiator as you remove them from the OEM radiator. Slide the new radiator into the space between the AC condenser and the fan shroud. Same as before, it's best to push the passenger side up first and navigate around the AC hard lines. You should not have to force anything into place, but the fan shroud and AC hard lines do like to get in the way. Reinstall the two brackets that secure the bottom of the radiator to the chassis. Use the quarter inch ratchet with a 12 millimeter long quarter inch socket.
Reinstall the two M6 bolts that secure the AC condenser to the radiator. Use the quarter inch ratchet with a 10 millimeter short quarter inch socket. Instead of using clips to secure the fan shroud to the radiator, the CFS radiator uses an M6 bolt to secure to the plastic tab on the fan shroud. Use the quarter inch ratchet with a 10 millimeter short quarter inch socket to secure both sides of the fan shroud to the radiator. Use the adjustable pliers and reinstall the top radiator hose onto the CFS radiator. Reinstall the lower radiator hose into the plastic holder to secure it to the fan shroud. Then use the adjustable pliers to reinstall the lower radiator hose and clamp onto the CFS radiator. This wraps up our install video. We will cover how to reinstall the under tray and bumper in a future video, so please stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this instructional video.